This morning, I saw a businessman in the newspaper saying this. China will lose to the US in the semiconductor competition in the future. Wow, this is another story of the rivalry between China and the US that we love. Uh, semiconductors will become more and more important in our lives in the future. So there is a saying that the country that dominates semiconductors will soon get the word. This is a situation where such a speak comes out. But even so, this businessman doesn't care China and speak. China will lose to the US in the semiconductor competition. He says it very confidently. And also, his influence is so huge, I can't help but trust what he says. So, who is this person? He is Maurice Chung. Have you ever heard of him? Maurice Chung? Maurice Chung is the founder of TSMC. Now, he is 92 years old, but as you can see from the photo, he is still looking good. So today, let's find out how Maurice Chang was able to found TSMC with you guys. Maurice Chang, who has a friendly grandfather's face. He was born in China in 1931. His family was a famous banker and very wealthy. In other words, he was young and rich. But everyone, young and rich is good, only their country is okay to live. When Maurice Chang was 7 years old, the war broke out. It was a large-scale war between China and Japan that lasted from 1937 to 1945. So Maurice Chang's family moved a lot, and he also transferred to school more than 9 times. I also move a lot and I know it's really hard. So eventually his family left chaotic China and went to Hong Kong. And after living in Hong Kong for a while, they immigrated to the United States. But I found something amazing here. Maurice Chang, the university he enrolled in in the United States was Harvard. I just said he moved a lot and transfer a lot, and how he could go Harvard? It's really amazing. <laughs> well, Maurice Chang, who started his university life at Harvard, he became obsessed with classic novels at some point, and he thinks like this, oh, I want to be a famous writer too. So he really dreamed of becoming a writer. But everyone, there is a such a thing, especially in Korea, in Japan, China, or Taiwan, these Asian cultures stand out, there is the culture of the weight of the head of the family. So Maurice Chang also, from some point, he felt that I have to be a help to my family as a son. If I become a writer, there is no guarantee when I can succeed. I have to choose a more realistic job. So Maurice Chang boldly gave up his dream of becoming a writer and went onto the path of an engineer. So as his first step, he transferred from Harvard University to MIT Engineering School. Wow, that's uh, really amazing too. Well, he got both bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering at MIT, and he really went on path of elite engineer. And then after graduating, it's time to choose a job. At first, he wanted to go to Ford Motor Company, but there was another company that offered better conditions, so he went to that company. And then Maurice Chang met his destiny company named Texas Instrument. Texas Instruments uh, is an American semiconductor company that still exists today and this company is still one of the world's top 10 semiconductor companies in terms of sales in 2023. And Morris Chang did such an amazing performance at this company. So despite being Asian, he rose to the position of vice president of the group. Of course there was a time of 20 years but at the time in the 1980s, the vice president position was an amazing achievement that no Asian could do. So, Maurice Chang established his position as a semiconductor expert at Texas Instrument. Then, 1985, his fate year, the Taiwanese government contacted Maurice Chang at this time. Mr. Maurice Chang, come to Taiwan. Let's do a semiconductor company together. Eventually, Maurice Chang went to Taiwan. Wouldn't it be proud at that moment? A country calls me and I go. It's really a call of the nation, right? I hope someday that they will come for me too. <laughs> well, in 1985, he crossed over to Taiwan, and Maurice Chang founded TSMC about two years later. At the time, the Taiwanese government gave 50% of the investment money, and foreign investors gave the other 50. So in fact, TSMC was almost a public company belonging to the Taiwanese government. Well, Maurice Chang was the CEO of TSMC for about 20 years until 2005, but it was 2009. 2009 was a time when there was an economic crisis in the US, the Lehman Brothers incident. So TSMC also faced great difficulties. So Maurice Chang, who had retired, returned to the management and he tries to save TSMC from the crisis. So he worked for another 10 years or so. 
Finally, he retired in 2018 at the age of 87. Well, so far, we've heard the story of Maurice Chang who founded TSMC. Uh, I think it was a good choice not to become a writer and go on to the path of engineer. I gave you a thumbs up. Then now, let's find out what kind of company TSMC is. Well, semiconductor companies can be divided into three categories. First, feminist companies that only design semiconductors. A representative example is NVIDIA. Second, foundry companies that only produce semiconductors. An example is today's TSMC. TSMC is the largest semiconductor production company in the world. It dominates 60% of the total market share. And a customer who asked TSMC to produce our design semiconductor is Apple. The A16 Bionic chip in iPhone 14 Pro and the M2 chip in the MacBook, they are all made by TSMC. So actually, if TSMC closes its factory, we have to say bye-bye to iPhone and MacBook. Third, comprehensive semiconductor companies that do both design and production of semiconductors. And examples are Intel in the US and Samsung Electronics in South Korea. Okay, Taiwan's TSMC will become more and more important company in the semiconductor world in the future. Um, lately, there were a lot of news that China can invade Taiwan. And one of the reasons why China wants to invade Taiwan is that TSMC is actually involved because China can catch up with the US with its own technology. So it wants to invade Taiwan by force and take away TSMC, which already has a lot of know-how. So China can use that know-how as a stepping stone to compete with the US in the semiconductor competition. So recently, a paper was published at the US Army College, and it said this. If China shows any intention of attacking Taiwan, they should destroy TSMC's factory themselves. But what if TSMC is really destroyed or production is stopped due to the invasion of Taiwan? The impact it will have on the global economy will be beyond imagination. It's not just a semiconductor company level, it's an economic stop level. All kinds of electronic produce that we can see that are related to semiconductor production stops completely. So they say that China's invasion of Taiwan itself could be an act of destroying the world of the world. Of course, China probably won't be able to attack Taiwan, but who knows the future, so I'm a little worried. Please leave a comment what you think. Thank you!